Hello everyone, coming to the second video of mole concept and let us just recall what has been done in the first video. I spoke about the mole, what do you mean by a mole and why do we use the mole, what is the necessity of using a mole in chemistry and we also discussed about some numericals that is the application part of a mole concept. Okay. And here in this video, we are actually talking about how did Avogadro number come from? Okay. What is the story behind that number? Okay. Why do we call it as Avogadro number? This is what some interesting fact we are going to discuss. Fine. So we all know one mole. One mole is nothing but just a number that is 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 particles. So in our chemistry, the particles are nothing but atoms and molecules or ions or whatever. Okay, fine. And you know this number, we famously call it as Avogadro number. Okay, and here Avogadro is the name of a scientist. Avogadro is the name of a scientist. And Avogadro is an Italian scientist. He is an Italian scientist. Okay. Actually, there is a very interesting story uh, about this Avogadro, the person called Avogadro. And Avogadro, Avogadro was a lawyer. Initially, he was a lawyer. But he has a lot of interest towards uh, physics and mathematics. So, he has done uh, graduations in uh, physics and mathematics. Later, he went into a research field regarding physics concepts. Okay, and he has become a very famous scientist. And later, he gave a very, very important law which is very much useful for the chemistry and the whole of chemical concepts most of the chemical concepts were dependent on this particular law called Avogadro's law yes everybody are aware of Avogadro's law Avogadro's law we also call it as Avogadro's hypothesis Avogadro's hypothesis okay so what does the law says what does the law says the law says equal volumes of gases contain equal number of molecules at the same temperature and pressure. Right? So listen to the caref listen carefully to the definition. Equal volumes of gases. That means, say for example, uh, in a container, I will take 10 ml of nitrogen gas. Okay? Another container, 10 ml of oxygen gas. In another container, uh, I will take 10 ml of hydrogen gas. Okay. I took the volumes equal and I maintain the containers temperature and pressure constant. All the three containers, I kept it at same temperature and same pressure. Okay. And the temperature is 273 Kelvin. Pressure is 1 bar atmospheric pressure. Okay. At STP conditions, uh, I am maintaining the temperature and pressure. Fine. And when you took equal volumes at a constant temperature and pressure, all the three guys will have same number of molecules. All the three guys will have same number of molecules. Okay. So this is what we call Avogadro's hypothesis. Okay. Fine. And before the time of Avogadro, Dalton has came forward with this theory. Everybody are aware of Dalton's theory, right? He is the first one who gave an idea about how compounds are formed. Okay. So what he told was uh, a compound can be formed when atoms of same element or different element combine. Okay. Say for example, water has to form. Water has to form. And if water has to form, hydrogen and oxygen atoms must combine. Then only compound can be formed, he told. Okay. But he didn't give an idea about the ratio of atoms that are combining to form a compound. Okay. So according to a Dalton's theory, we can actually say that the formula of water was just HO. Okay. So what Dalton thought was, one atom of hydrogen may combine with one atom of oxygen only to form a water he thought. Like he didn't know about the ratio of atoms how they are combining with each other. Okay. And once the Avogadro came to a field. Okay. On introducing 
Avogadro's law. And he is the one who gave an idea about the ratio of atoms that are combining with each other. Okay. And later Avogadro is the person who told that the formula of water may be H2O. Okay. He told that two atoms of hydrogen could combine with one atom of oxygen. Okay. And later this formula was confirmed and proved by many experiments also. Okay. So this was the idea given by Avogadro. So he has done lot of contributions in the field of chemistry. That is why to give an honor for this person, okay, to give a token of respect to this person, uh, the later scientist, the European scientist, okay, invented a number. It's not invented. They just, uh, it is based on an assumption. They assumed a number through various calculations and the number was this. Okay, and just to in respect of Avogadro, they have given his name for this number and they called it as Avogadro's number. Okay, so Avogadro did not invent the number. Avogadro did not calculate. He didn't even know this number. Okay, so this was the number invented by the European scientist. Just to give an honor to this Avogadro person, they kept his name to this number. That's it. Okay, so don't have a misconception that Avogadro invented the number. No, no. Okay, and this was the number based on the assumption, that's it. Okay, and later that assumption uh, became true by various experiments. Clear everybody? So now I am going to tell you how they have calculated this number. Why they have taken only this number to represent a mole. Okay, so for that, you must know the definition of mole. This is the definition of one mole. It says that one mole is the number of particles, okay, that is there in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope. Yes, in our nature, we have three isotopes for carbon. So, what are the three isotopes? Carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-14. Okay, among the three isotopes, this particular variety of carbon, that is carbon-1 isotope is abundantly present in the nature. Okay, so whatever carbon we have in our body or in foodstuff, and more 90% of the chemical compounds which are present in our nature has carbon only in it, right? So whatever the carbon we find in various substances is carbon-12 isotope. This is the abundantly present isotope in our nature. So the scientists have considered this carbon as a reference. Okay, clear everybody? So why not the other element they considered? Why only the carbon they considered is because of this reason only. This is abundantly present element in our nature and this is not that much reactive also. It is a stable element Okay, that can be present in our nature. Okay, not very much reactive and uh, not very much, uh, you know, unstable also. Clear everybody? Huh? So that is the reason carbon-12 element was selected for the reference. Okay, and even the atomic masses of elements also they have calculated with the reference of carbon-12. Okay, they took carbon-12 as a reference and they calculated the atomic masses of other elements also. So here also carbon-12 only we have taken. Okay, so just uh, see the definition carefully. One mole is number of particles that is there in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope. Okay, so how many number of particles are there in 12 gram of carbon-12 isotope? Let us calculate. Okay, so we all know that one carbon atom, one carbon atom has a mass, has a mass of around 12 AMU. Yes or no? Atomic mass of carbon. Atomic mass means what? Mass of one carbon atom. In my previous video, I told this. Okay, mass of one carbon atom is 12 AMU. Okay, and remember one thing. 1 AMU is equal to 1.65 into 10 raised to minus 24 grams. So this is a very famous conversation, uh, conversion factor that you have to remember. 1 AMU is 1.65 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. 
Okay. So now AMU, I will convert it in grams. So what do you get? So if you convert that in grams, that means one carbon atom has a mass which is equal to 12 into 1.65 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. No? AMU, if you convert it in grams, you get this much. So, this much grams is the mass of one carbon atom. Okay, fine. So, 12 grams of carbon may have how many carbon atoms? Just a simple calculation. Okay, so one carbon atom's mass is this many grams. So, 12 grams has how many carbon atoms in it? Okay, so just do a calculation here. So, what do you get? 12 divided by 12 into 1.65 into 10 to the power of minus 24. So, 1 divided by 1.65 if you do, you will get 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms. See, 12 grams of carbon has how many atoms in it? How many particles in it? 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 particles. So, this particular particles, this amount of particles, they called it as Avogadro number. Okay? So, Avogadro number is nothing but number of particles that is there in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope. Here everybody. So this is the reference number that they have taken to call it as a mole. Here everyone. And this is how our Avogadro number comes from. Through calculations. Okay. And different scientists have calculated differently on taking various concepts. So whatever the concept they kept it in mind. You know this was the number they got. And so commonly they assumed that let us assume one mole is this number they got. And we kept on using this number over the years. Okay. And it was proved true uh, by various experiments also. Clear everybody? Fine. And now. Uh, in my last video, I also told that uh, atomic mass and gram atomic mass, both are different by definitions, but both of them have same digit to use practically in the various calculations, is it? So, the reason behind that I am going to tell you. See, look here. Atomic mass definition, we know it is mass of one atom. Okay, gram atomic mass definition is mass of one mole of atoms. One mole of atoms in the sense 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms. Okay, so 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms will have a mass, you know. That mass we will call it as gram atomic mass. Okay, uh, say for example, atomic mass of oxygen that is you know, mass of one oxygen atom is 16 AMU. This is what we call atomic mass and this is what the number that is mentioned in our periodic table also. In our periodic table, all elements were mentioned with their atomic number as well as atomic mass. Is it? Fine. So, this is very well known unit AMU. Okay, fine. And coming to the gram atomic mass of oxygen, that is mass of one mole of oxygen atoms. That means 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms mass is 16 grams. You see the digit is same. This is mass of one oxygen atom 16. Mass of 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 oxygen atoms mass is also 16. But you see the unit. Unit is different. The unit is different. This is, this is matters a lot. Okay. And let us see how come you have a same digit with different unit. Okay. This is what I am going to explain for you. Fine. And let us calculate. Fine. So one oxygen atom, one oxygen atom has a mass 16 am, you know. 1 AMU is equal to 1.65 into 10 raised to minus 24 grams, right? So, convert it in grams. How do you get? Uh, 16 into 1.65 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. Yes or no? 1 oxygen atoms mass. If you want to calculate it in grams, then it will be these many grams. 
Okay, clear? And now, one mole of oxygen atoms has how much mass? Okay, one mole in the sense what? 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 oxygen atoms has how much mass? Okay, we are going to calculate gram atomic mass of oxygen here. Okay, so let us see what do you get here? Just a cross multiplication. So how do you calculate 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23 into 16 into 1.65 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. And if you calculate this, you will get the answer 16 grams. Okay, so this is how you got mass of 1 mole of oxygen atom 16 grams. Okay, so this is how you have same digit but different unit. Okay, mass of 1 oxygen atom is 16 AMU. But we know no, 1 AMU is equal to 1.65 into 10 raised to minus 24. So you are converting it in grams. And you are going to calculate gram atomic mass. Gram atomic mass in the sense mass of 1 mole of oxygen atoms. No? So mass of 1 mole of oxygen atoms is how much? Just when you do a cross multiplication, interestingly you will get the answer 16 grams. Okay. So this is how you have a same digit for both atomic mass as well as gram atomic mass of any element. Or for any molecule also you will have a same digit. But unit will be different. Okay. So this is how it can be explained. Thank you.